Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is the virtual book release of Dr. Mohan Kanda's book, uh, the latest publication of his, uh, which is called The Random Harvest. And we have an, indeed a very impressive list of uh, speakers and guests today. Uh, but uh, without uh, wasting much time, I would begin by inviting uh, the, uh, a very close associate of Dr. Mohan Kanda, Professor Jivadi Durga Prasad, who is currently the director of Center for uh, Good Governance in Hyderabad. He's a well-known uh, agriculture scientist. And uh, he worked in several uh, international organizations like UNDP, DFID, World Bank, etc. He has worked with Dr. Mohan Kanda in uh, several uh, positions and uh, particularly in the agriculture sector. Uh, I request him to uh, present the welcome address today. Dr. Uh, Professor Durga uh, Devi Prasad. Dear Krishna, sir. Namaskar and Devi Prasad, sir. Uh, good afternoon, everybody <coughs> who has come for the meeting. On behalf of BHP Books, it's a great pleasure to invite the distinguished guests and as well as the guests online. Uh, it's a very happy occasion that uh, the distinguished uh, people have gathered here for this book release titled Random Harvest and Miss, an Assorted Miscellany, authored by Dr. Mohan Kanda. Well, the book is not just uh, memos and experiences by ah, a well-known okay. bureaucrat of the country, but uh, it is, it is filled with uh, thoughtful ideas which would help to develop the country in the 21st century. Well, in ancient Greece, the success used to be celebrated by social gatherings. Today, I'm very happy to see that Dr. Mohan Kanda is sharing his success with his near and dear, and uh, for all luminaries and the extraordinary personalities in the country. Uh, I would like to extend a warm welcome to Sri Prabhat Kumarji, former Cabinet Secretary, Government of India. Uh, and he was also first governor of the Jharkhand. He is the chief guest for today's event, who will be releasing the book very shortly. It's indeed a great pleasure to welcome Padma Bhushan Sri uh, Padma Nabayagaru to this event, who is the currently chairman, Board of Governors, Administrative Staff College of India. A great pleasure to welcome Veteran General Nirmal Kumar Vich, the 21st Chief of Indian Army. Madam Vasra Mishra, she deserves a special welcome, who is presently Secretary, Union Public Service Commission. Special welcome because she has contributed forward to the book, which is going to be released very shortly. I'm pleased to welcome my mentor, friend, philosopher, and guide, and author of the book, Dr. Mohan Kanda as uh, Acharya Ji said, bridegroom. Anyway, uh, I welcome the publisher of the book, who is a good friend of mine, Anil Shah. Before I hand over the responsibility of moderating the event to see B.P. Acharya, it's very pertinent to say a few words about this Indian Administrative Officer of the 1983 batch. During the span of nearly four decades of his career, Dr. Acharya, has served in various positions in as well Andhra Pradesh and as well as Telangana, and has been responsible to launch many innovative initiatives for the benefit of the people of the Telugu states. As secretary to the Industry and Commerce Department of the Andhra Pradesh, and later as managing director of the uh, APIAC, the Industrial Infrastructure Corporation, uh, he was instrumental in the prestigious Genome Valley and the Biotech Park on the outskirts of Hyderabad near Shamipet. The results are started showing now after two decades, as witnessed by that recently the Biotech Park has released the co-vaccine, the India's indigenous you know, uh, COVID-19 vaccine actually. Uh, Sri B.P. Acharya has also been instrumental in facilitating various IT parks in Hyderabad, around Hyderabad, uh, Sages, Special Economic Zones in Andhra Pradesh, Pharma City, etc., which has created employment to nearly about 4 million people directly or indirectly, and that's his contribution. After state bifurcation, he was elected to Telangana, and as principal secretary to tourism, he really created a brand for Telangana tourism. And after that, he has been appointed as the special chief secretary to the planning department, and one of the initiatives that he has established a district knowledge and innovation centers which have greatly helped to improve the service delivery at district level, actually. 
then as the director general of the MCR Human Resource Development Institute, a premier institute of the country, we all know probably, Sri Acharya conducted foundation courses for the All India Service Officers like IPS, IFS, and Central Civil Services uh, on behalf of the Lal Bahadur Shastri uh, Academy of the National Administration, actually. Not only that, on behalf of the Department of Personal and Training, he has conducted trainings to about 1,000 field staff, which is highest by any state in the country. And this has led him to, or probably made him responsible to mentor several other states like Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat, Jammu and Kashmir, Odisha, etc. Uh, <coughs> he is retired, but does not appear to be tired yet, because he still continues to contribute to uh, many organizations, particularly recently, uh, he has been started extending help to the Indian Council of Medical Research for their National Animal Resource Facility for the bio Biomedical Research near Genome Valley in Hyderabad, actually. Recently, Dr. Acharya, Sri Acharya has been nominated to the uh, working group of the Mission Karmayogi as a member, which takes care of the, um, basically it's a task force for the uh, civil service reforms. Uh, thank you all for coming the, for the event. And I sincerely hope the rest of the program to be taken shortly. Uh, now I hand over the proceedings to Sri Ajayana Ji. Namaskar. Thank you, Professor Devi Prasad. Uh, and uh, thanks a lot for the rather kind words, which I don't deserve. Uh, and very elaborate uh, introduction that you gave to me, which was, which was not uh, perhaps... Certainly you deserve, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, so the, the next on the agenda is an introduction of the book by Mrs. Vasudha Mishra. In fact, she has uh, written the foreword to the book. This is a book uh, which is unique in many ways, which I thought. Uh, before she gives a uh, detailed uh, uh, introduction, I will briefly tell my view on the book, which is a, uh, indeed an eclectic uh, mix of uh, several essays that he's been writing over the years in, uh, as op-ed articles in a uh, newspaper here in Hans India. Uh, the, uh, the range is uh, indeed impressive from the sublime to the mundane, uh, from the philosophical to the political. He covers such a wide range, which in a way, uh, so typically uh, Kandaesque, if I can use the word, like the Kafkaesque, uh, it has been his uh, hallmark. The range he covers in his canvas is indeed very wide, but I leave it to Vasudha to give a more elaborate introduction to the book. Vasudha has been the, is currently the secretary of the Union Public Service Commission since May, 2020. She had the difficult, daunting task of conducting the civil service exam during the pandemic period, and very successfully she did it. Before that, she was additional secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture. She belongs to the 87 batch of our Telangana cadre, and in Hyderabad, she is remembered as a rather generous and kind finance secretary. Normally, finance secretaries are trained to say no to everything, but she was not like that. She helped several projects and initiatives. Uh, and uh, in between, she was also additional secretary in the uh, Department of Personnel and Administrative Reforms. She conducted uh, several initiatives under that. Uh, she has been one of our very able officers, and she did a course in uh, the Maxwell School in uh, Syracuse University, USA, a certificate course. So she's, uh, uh, we are eagerly waiting for her to come back to Telangana in whatever appropriate capacity, uh, she and her husband, uh, Rajiv. So Vasudha's uh, floor is yours to introduce the book, which I know is a difficult task. Thank you, sir. A good afternoon to all the eminent dignitaries present for the virtual launch of uh, Dr. Mohan Kanda's book, Random Harvest and the Sorted Miscellany. Uh, I am uh, privileged that uh, Dr. Kanda asked me to write the foreword and I'm doubly blessed today that uh, he has asked me to introduce the book at this launch event. Um, the title is, when I, when I saw the book first time, I thought of the title and it is very apt. Dr. Kanda has been in agriculture sector for very long from Joint Secretary to uh, Secretary Agriculture Government of India. And uh, so harvest is the apt word. Uh, sir has used the word random because uh, it's really an eclectic mix, mix of uh, various uh, topics as uh, uh, Mr. Acharya pointed out. Uh, before me. Uh, but I would say, sir, it is not that random because it is every article, every essay uh, points to on one thing, uh, how there should be, uh, how any uh, issue, whether it's in governance or in society, 
should be dealt and how it is being dealt and what is the way forward. So it is to that extent very focused and uh, uh, it is written as uh, Mr. Acharya also said uh, in uh, Mr. Kanda's uh, trade, uh, Dr. Kanda's uh, trademark style, a uh, lot of wit, humor and uh, lacing of uh, sarcasm. And uh, it is uh, unique to, I think, Dr. Kanda that he has uh, every, every aspect that he has analyzed from, uh, um, you know, independence to children and not an uh, and appropriate uh, balanced upbringing of children to um, you know, secularism and spirituality and politics and uh, center state relations and uh, international relations, uh, how uh, things should be uh, and how as, uh, you know, how governance goes on. For citizens, it is something that, uh, you know, they, they would do well to read the book because uh, without understanding how complicated the wheels of the uh, government uh, uh, churn, People have a, you know, have an attitude of just uh, saying that, you know, this should have been done or that should have been done. So the book very uh, nicely illustrates to the people how actually the work gets done and what are the various issues that uh, we have to uh, look at. Who are the between the uh, permanent executive like us, uh, the civil servants and the political executives? What are the uh, you know, uh, balance and uh, trade-offs, etc. when a decision is uh, being made. Uh, so uh, it is good for all the citizens to go through. It is a light reading. So it's not really heavy that, you know, you can't read it except as a, I mean, it is an evening reading. You can, or you can read it between uh, various chores in the day. But then for the journalists also, I would say that it is a good reading because many of them I see these days, they, uh, uh, they jump into the uh, job straight away. And uh, so uh, for it is a ready reckoner for how, again, the government works. Uh, so they will be, their uh, writings will be more informed if they go through this book. For civil servants and aspiring civil servants, certainly this book is a gem, how uh, the uh, ethics can be taken care of in uh, governance, how they should be what they are, what is the de facto position, what is the de jure position, so everything. And then from a citizen's perspective, a 360 degree perspective of all the uh, issues that he has taken up. I mean, it is surprising and it is uh, really, um, uh, you know, uh, very exciting to see how he can combine so easily, he can sh shuttle between the role of a senior civil servant of 40 years plus standing in various important departments and. Uh, governments uh, and uh, as a citizen, as a father, as a grandfather. So that uh, I would say it was really nice and uh, I have read it uh, twice and both the times I found something uh, different. Uh, and so it is really, uh, you know, it is for us to uh, get the, I mean, I, I wish the book uh, success and I wish more and more people read it for their own benefit. So uh, thank you, uh, sir, for giving me this opportunity. And I thank Mr. Acharya for uh, you know, giving me this opportunity. I will not take more time because uh, we want to hear uh, the uh, seniors and the luminaries that have gathered uh, for this book launch. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Vasudha, for the very brave attempt to introduce this book, which is uh, difficult to introduce, I thought, uh, because of, the, of it's the variety of the subject which covers. Uh, and before uh, we go to the next speaker, we have this ceremonial launch of the book. Uh, may I request uh, the chief guest, uh, Mr. Pravat Kumarji, to uh, uh, show the book, display the book ceremonially so that uh, it will be taken as a release of the book virtually, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Acharya Ji. Uh, let me stand up because one doesn't release the book sitting down. So perhaps it won't be visible, sir. Aap just a book dikha dijiye, sir. I, you just display the book. Abhi hum dikhate. I will just stand up and show you the book. Give yes, me sir. half a minute. May I also request all other guests to display the book, respective book, after the re release by uh, Mr. Pravat Kumarji. Can you see the book? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm just 
releasing it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Nikunjesh, your. Thank you very much. Thank you, Acharya. All IAS officers. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for the formal release of the book virtually. The next speaker uh, for us is one of the most celebrated and decorated generals uh, in the Indian Army, uh, General Nirmal Chandra Vij, who uh, worked with uh, Dr. Mohan Kanda when he was in the NDMA. Uh, the, uh, General Vij started his career in the- Other way around, Bibu, I worked with him. Yes, sir. I, I stand corrected, sir. Uh, General Vij started his career uh, uh, I mean, he had uh, literally the baptism by fire by joining in the uh, Indo-Pak war in the 1962. That was the, uh, immediately after he got, he was commissioned, uh, within weeks of his commissioning, in fact. Then uh, it culminated in another celebrated career in uh, 99 Kargil war, where he served as the Director General of Military Operations, DGMO as it is called. He was the 21st Chief of the, uh, the, uh, the Army uh, Staff of the Indian Army. Uh, he held the office from 1st January 2003 to 31st January 2005. So nearly two years, he was the chief of the staff of the Indian Army. After retirement, uh, he, uh, he became the founder vice chairman of the National Disaster Management Authority with the equivalent rank of a union minister of state. He was decorated with uh, the Uttam Yudh Seva. Bibu, Bibu, union yes, cabinet sir. minister. Pardon, sir? Union cabinet minister. The members were ministers of state. Okay, there, there is a mistake in the CV, sir. Cabinet Minister, I stand corrected again. Uh, he also was uh, conferred with Param Vishista Seva Medal, uh, PVSM. He uh, also had an important role in the Operation Pukri, uh, where they had to extricate the trapped Indian peacemaking forces at the Sierra Leone uh, in, in, in that country. Many, several uh, initiatives that he took in the NDMA stand us in good stead. And uh, what we see today are the, uh, the, uh, the, the actions during the uh, cyclones and disasters where the, the, the thinking, initial planning and thinking was done by him. And uh, Dr. Mohan Kanda also was a part of the NDMA at that point in time. So may I now request uh, General Vij to uh, speak uh, about Dr. Kanda and his the book. Uh, General Saab. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Acharya. Uh, Shri Prabhat Kumar, Shri Prabhupada, whom it's a great pleasure to see today after a couple of years. Uh, all other dignitaries uh, who are involved in today's book release. Uh, of course, star of the day or the groom of the day, as has been called, the author, Dr. Kanda. And ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to you once again. Uh, let me start uh, by congratulating Dr. Bone Kanda for uh, coming out with yet another book. Uh, this is the third or fourth book release that I have attended. First one I remember was in Delhi when uh, uh, the former <laughs> Vice President Dr. Ansari released the book. And now very recently, around six to eight months back, I think, uh, when the present Vice President released a book on the agriculture. So he's a uh, a prophetic uh, writer who writes very, very often. Now, this particular book is slightly different. You know, it's a wide and varied collection of uh, different types of essays which uh, are really concerned with day-to-day -day life. So they, they have a coverage of almost 360 degrees as the lady who introduced uh, the book, she mentioned. And they are very interesting reading. So you can really pick and choose what you want to read on a particular day. Uh, and I think most of all, what is praiseworthy is that he's done it during the pandemic time when most of us are battling really with, uh, you know, trying to find the ways and means to spend our time usefully. So I'm glad I must give him full marks for uh, having concentrated so much at this time uh, when uh, it's not really difficult, not easy to do some serious work. Now, how do I know Dr. Kanda? A lot of that has already been spoken, but I must speak about the man I know. 
uh, because uh, author you all know you all live most of you live uh, very close to each other uh, i met him first time in september uh, 2005 when uh, we were deputed to raise the national disaster management authority an organization which was to look after both natural and man made disasters and man made disasters were very important the present uh, pandemic would have formed a part of it because biological warfare of a kind and we had a varied team the ias the ips there was a chairman of the baba atomic research organization there was a professor of disaster management and there was also a politician but a very polished one and of course uh, my friend uh, dr kanda who was from the ias and who knew about the civil services backward so the routine which we had followed was that we had given a work to each member and he used to prepare a particular subject and then we used to all sit down together and uh, after he finished that work after a couple of months maybe four to six months with the help of the government officials the ngos the various experts in the field the academics whom all these people introduce us uh, to them uh, and then work out so dr kanda was uh, what i would call uh, that he was the cerebral part and the cerebral co core of our team i'll be honest with you on because he was the one who knew how to maneuver around the corridors of the delhi because having been the agriculture secretary also there and earlier in delhi he had a very good knowledge of course the least informed uh, was me who after 43 years of army service joined uh, the ndma and except for my 14 15 years of my adolescence i had hardly seen any civil life so i knew something about my own subject but civil life i had to learn a lot about uh, though i found many words which were similar like the word inclusive you use which in your definition of the word inclusive i saw then but as far as the army is concerned everything is inclusive we have a muslim commanding a sikh unit we have a sikh commanding a madrasi unit or a tamil unit and things of that kind and we go to each other worship places so inclusive and inclusive in a different sense as to what does inclusive really mean in civil administration so uh, that's how we used to work and at the end of the day both me and uh, uh, mom kanda we were living on the same direction that was towards the tuglak road and we used to travel together and that was my learning period you know so he was my guru of sorts so i'll pick up every day one subject or the other and ask him about it because uh, he could tell me on the civil side and of course one thing i left uh, in that organization was also a little imprint about the army so that they also got interested in the armed forces so once in a while once in a while we did uh, talk about uh, the armed forces also that's why some of his writings in wall you will find about the armed forces also now we professionals generally tend to write about our own specific fields because that's what we know best but he so widely read and so well read and so well informed of subjects other than the civil administration or the that his subjects and his choice of subjects is very wide and varied and uh, that's why this book the random uh, harvest has is reflective of experience not only the civil service but his articles range from current affairs to social economic political matters agriculture which is one strong area and also of subjects of various important uh, fields so i must say uh, it is indeed it has been a pleasure reading it because what i personally look for in a book is that the book must give me it should suit my taste you know when you read it you should start enjoying it from the word go and number 2 it should be compelling it should make compelling reading one page must take you to the next one and the next one should take you to the very next one because that's how you enjoy reading a book and of course uh, as an add on it should add to the knowledge so it is always uh, been uh, great talking to him whenever we meet whenever he comes to delhi he is kind enough to drop in and we have a cup of coffee together which we had god knows hundreds of cups of coffee together in our five years that we spent together and one learns a lot from him and i must compliment him once again for the excellent work he is doing and is continuing to do so he is really retired but not i won't don't want to use the political word like 
tired with Mr. Vajpayee mentioned once. But he is still continuing to retain his just in life, his just in and interest in various items. And uh, I hope he'll keep writing for the good of us all. And we enjoy reading your uh, writings, uh, Bond. It is always a pleasure to listen to you and also read about you. And lastly, about wit. Now, wit is not something which is very easily to come by. I have the least of it because I think I got so stiff jacketed in my own uniform that I never picked it up. But he is a very witty man to be around and it is a pleasure to be with him all the time. And uh, thank you very much, Mon, for uh, your book, for sending me a copy of that. And uh, it's a privilege to join the release of your book. Thank you very much once again. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for the uh, those words on uh, the on the author of the book and uh, your experience at NDMA. I'm sure uh, the civil military liaison, which is the most important part in a relief operation, uh, the the foundation that you gave to NDMA that helped in uh, cementing it uh, the liaison between the civil authorities and the military. Uh, the next uh, on the uh, program is uh, addressed by another celebrated civil servant. Uh, Sri K. Padmanabhaya. Uh, he was the former Home Secretary of Government of India. Uh, at the moment, uh, currently, he is the uh, Chairman of the Court of Governors of ASCII, Administrative Staff College of India, which is located in Hyderabad. Uh, Mr. Padmanabhaya joined the IAS uh, and was allotted Maharashtra Cadre in 1961. Uh, he had several uh, important assignments in Government of Maharashtra, and uh, he was later. Uh, he served in Government of India in many important positions and uh, he in the Ministry of Urban Development and during the uh, Latour earthquake in 1993, he played an important role uh, as the member of the Advisory Committee of Internal Experts. Uh, he was awarded uh, Padma Bhushan in uh, the year 2008. It's a very rare honor for a civil servant and uh, that uh, is the recipient of that. After his retirement, uh, he headed a committee on police reforms set up by the government of India to uh, study the functional capabilities of Indian police force and propose the reorganization measures to revamp the force. Uh, so now with that important, uh, the Padmanabhaya committee's uh, recommendations on that and also the committee which uh, he headed uh, on disaster management efforts, both are important contributions that he made uh, uh, to the scheme of things. Several awards, uh, was, uh, the, he is a recipient and, and uh, many honors and awards. He's, when he was Municipal Commissioner of Mumbai, he was given the Giants International Award in 1991, Shiromani Award, a long list of awards. We all see the, uh, the kind of uh, energy and the efforts uh, to revamp the, uh, the work culture in ASCII that he has brought in and the, the new set of programs. Uh, number of uh, new initiatives that he has taken in Administrative Staff College of India. May I now request uh, Ms. Padmanavya, sir, to address the gathering? Thank you, Dr. Acharya, and uh, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, my old uh, friend and colleague, Sri Prabhat Kumar, General Bridge, and uh, all other assembled uh, gentlemen and ladies, a very good morning. Uh, First of all, I want to congratulate Mohan for having written this book because I read the book uh, very closely and I enjoyed thoroughly enjoyed it. If I take the test of general wage, that uh, what is it? Uh, I mean, how does a book become important? I mean, if you like it, if you feel like reading it and page after page you read, that is the interest uh, that it holds for you. That's a good book. About the canvas of the book, everybody has said the canvas is very wide, everything has been covered and all that. That is true. I don't want to repeat that. But I must say that he has also covered some very less known and less discussed topics, like, for example, standard time for India, whether it should be one standard or many standards and all that. Then there is an article on health of politicians. You know, there are many others. I just wanted to give you a couple of examples. So that is it. As regards the title of the book, this random harvest, yes, uh, he specialized in agriculture. That's why harvest is a very apt one. But uh, the random, uh, you know, reflects his modesty, you know. I don't think it is a random harvest. I would call it a bumper harvest. So, uh, really, there is so much that is uh, to be taken from this book. You know. 
the most important things i have found is that the humor the sarcasm and the wit as the uh, uh, other speakers have said which comes out through various instances and various articles in this book i just wanted to mention a couple of them uh, you know to highlight there is one article about karunanidhi uh, karunanidhi the chief the then chief minister of uh, tamil nadu who died and where should he be cremated where should be his uh, memorial whether it should be in the marina beach of uh, madras where some people were uh, sort of uh, cremated or it should be in the gandhi uh, sort of uh, memorial in gindi so the case went to the uh, i mean the matter went to the court the high court and uh, the arguments that were advanced on both sides he repeats all of them they are you know uh, exhilarating you know in, in fact if you read them so at one point he says now if you are not buried in marina but buried along with uh, kamaraj and raja ji etc in the gindi uh, gandhi memorial does it not amount to a decent burial he puts a question you know i think it's worth uh, pondering over that uh, another example i want to give is he was talking about the over centralization of certain schemes like for example pm's uh, uh, you know gram sadak yojana now people used to question I mean, where is the decentralization why should pm talk of uh, gram sadak yojana in this context he quotes the cm of uh, telangana who has said pradhan mantri ko gaon mein kya kaam hai so this is uh, on lines of the famous silsila song saying mere angane mein tumhara kya kaam hai in the in the same sense so he repeats it here there is another article about the working of the legislatures and um, uh, the question hours uh, the type of replies they give you and all that and i would come to that but about working of legislatures he says the title of the article is all is fair in legislature and war there is on the lines of all is fair in love and war you know so he just uh, used that then there is another occasion where he talks about parliament questions how they are answered his reply is the questions are merely replied to in the parliament but never answered how true it is i tell you because i have drafted so many parliamentary questions and you never answer what uh, uh, the question i mean you only give a reply to him you know uh, in another in the same context he cites the case of uh, the iconic uh, film star and uh, chief minister ntr uh, he was uh, sort of replying to a question but the people were uh, sort of repeatedly asking him supplementaries and uh, you know uh, they were not satisfied with his answer so out of disgust what the chief minister did was there was a note for supplementaries always given to the chief minister in case there are adverse questions or some such thing what you should do Uh, the gentleman without much of knowledge about this political working he read out the entire note for the supplementaries you know to the <laughs> to the assembly uh, to the fun and uh, amusement of all the legislators there so that is it the chapter uh, on uh, simultaneous uh, elections he calls it the, the chapter heading an idea whose time has not come i mean people have heard about an idea whose time has come he is talking about an idea whose time has not come there is another uh, one very interesting article about the cbi raids etc you know the raid raj now there he is so clever instead of squarely condemning the uh, sort of uh, these raids he says i quote political leaders in our country have managed to contrive a situation where it is believed by common people that agencies go by the whims and fancies of the government in power what a clever statement i tell you so he says the, the government have contrived the political parties leaders have contrived to create a situation where it is believed by the common man i mean he puts everything on the common man you know that the agencies go by the whims and fancies of the this one so similarly uh, one more one or a couple of more instances i would give you there is this uh, uh, sort of uh, defections political defections there is a law for sorry yeah in that he says speaker after speaker have for some strange reason have not been able to find the outer limit of the reasonable time prescribed by law now they have been sitting on it without deciding the last one he was a planning secretary he was supposed to go and meet the finance secretary and he was going to the finance secretary's room the feeling he describes is similar to a plane landing 
it is a transition from fantasy to reality. The planning, you know, you fantasize, I would do this, I would do that. It's the wish list, you know. You go to the finance secretary, there's a real uh, sort of hard ground hits you. And then, so this is the type of things he has written. And I think it's a wonderful book. And I think every uh, sort of common citizen must read this book. Uh, every common citizen who has some interest in public life. And especially the higher uh, high school and the college students, I think should make it a point to read because in India, we have the habit of criticizing uh, governmental policies and all those things without understanding much, without reading much. You don't have to read into uh, volumes of anything. Some, you know, uh, small essays like this, I think is uh, very, very welcome. I thank once again Mohan for giving me this opportunity. And I'm sure the book would be a great uh, uh, help for uh, sort of common citizen to understand the contemporary events. Thank you very much for calling. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for your uh, words of enlightenment and uh, the way you described the articles in the book. In fact, uh, I also share the feelings as a former planning secretary of the state government where uh, we had similar uh, experiences. As a matter of fact, uh, after me, the government have abolished the planning department and they were combined with finance department. There's no, no such uh, from, uh, the gap between the vision and the dream and the landing of the plane. So I was the last planning secretary of the Telangana state. Uh, they, in their wisdom, they thought. It, in their wisdom, they thought it's better to have merged planning with finance. Uh, next on our uh, agenda is the address, much-awaited address by the chief guest of this virtual function, Mr. Prabhat Komaji, one of the most celebrated civil servants uh, of our country. Uh, he was a topper of the 1963 batch of the IAS uh, and uh, rose to the level of uh, cabinet secretary. Uh, in his uh, multifarious uh, achievements that he had in these uh, four decades in his service. Uh, he holds, uh, in, in fact, three postgraduate degrees, one in physics, other in mathematics and economics, from the London School of uh, Economics uh, in the last, the last one. Uh, currently, he's involved with, the, uh, with an institution called IC Center for Governance. IC is the Initiative of Change International Foundation, uh, which has uh, started this uh, party in India. And uh, under the aegis of that institution, he is involved in several initiatives of better governance and ethics in public life, which is another subject where uh, Dr. Kanda has uh, authored a book, Ethics in the Civil Service and the Public Life. Uh, uh, we, we are told that uh, Mr. Ravat Kumar is contemplating to write a book on this, so we eagerly await uh, his book. Uh, uh, I know uh, Dr. Kanda had several associations with him and uh, they worked with him in different areas when he was Secretary of Agriculture and other uh, fields. May I now have the, uh, may I now request uh, the Chief Guest, uh, Mr. Prabhat Kumar, to address all of us. Sir. Thank, thank you, Sri Atar. Thank you very much. Uh, my esteemed senior colleague, Sri Padmana Bhaiya, General Vich, Srimati Vasudha Mishra, Sri Devi Prasad, Dr. Mohan Kanda, and friends. I have uh, much pleasure in releasing this delightful book, Random Harvest, by my old friend, Dr. Mohan Kanda. I have known Mohan as a brilliant civil servant who has excelled in every assignment of his. But you know, after retirement, I seem to have lost touch with many of my old friends due to age, circumstances, and also because of geographical distance. You see, uh, and that includes Mohan, and that includes Sri Padmanabhaiya. You see, many of my batchmates have preferred to settle in better cities like Chennai, Hyderabad, Mumbai, and Bengaluru. And therefore, there are very few occasions for us to meet now. Uh, friends, last year, I was looking for a suitable editor for the special issue of the Journal of Governance. The special issue was on disaster management. And suddenly I remembered Mohan. There couldn't have been a better editor than him, as he had the knowledge of the subject from all angles. 
In fact, what General Vich just said. See, I remember General Vich and his uh, very comprehensive uh, briefings in the war room during the Kargil uh, war. And I also thank him for inducting me in the advisory board of the uh, Vivekanand Foundation. So I called Mohan and I requested him to be the editor of the special issue dedicated to disaster management. Uh, he readily agreed. And for six months, he devoted a lot of his time and energy in creating the book, a 500 page volume. The issue came out as a veritable collector's item on the subject. Uh, NDMA took uh, more than 50 copies of the issue to be circulated to their state agencies and associations. So when Mohan asked me to release his new book, I was a little apprehensive. I was apprehensive because I'm generally cagey about the memoirs of fellow bureaucrats. There are so many of them these days. Last year, I attended a launch of a book by a cadre mate at the India International Center. And I found that I was among the rare bureaucrats who had reached their 80s without daring to write their memoirs. I saw at least two dozen autobiographers among the audience. And the beauty of the autobiographies of these colleagues is that if you have read one, you have read all. So you, could, you can understand my apprehension. But when the book arrived, I was hugely relieved. Mohan Kanda's book, thankfully, is of a different genre altogether. It's a fascinating departure from the common genre of bureaucratic volumes. It's not a book of personal memoirs. It is a collection of his thoughts on a variety of subjects. And more importantly, uh, his narrative is refreshingly different. He has an irreverent look at the bureaucracy and also at the political executive. He displays his right to be objective and unbiased. He is not cluttered by the fringes of the offices that he has held in the civil service. And that is one of the best things I like about his writing. You see, according to his own admission, he comes from a family where different political beliefs coexist. His sister working for an arm of the Congress party and his nephew, a national CPIM leader. But his views on various debatable issues, and there are so many debatable, debatable issues in the book, his views are characterized by robust objectivity, Cartesian logic, and love for his country. He has the courage of his conviction to state his case without fear of consequences. And the beauty of it is that he does it without offending anyone. In fact, he possesses the rare magic of taking care of everybody's sentiments without even you know, offending anyone. Even if you disagree with him, you are bound to admire his viewpoint. I also found that he never wavers from his principles. There are so many personal snippets, and some of you, you have related. There are so many personal anecdotes sprinkled in the discussion of national issues. For instance, uh, once he says, the agriculture secretary, Kamal Pandey, he asked him whether he has released a certain amount of fund to the state of Andhra Pradesh under the crop insurance scheme. And Mohan, who was at that time the joint secretary, he replied, I did not. The formula did. I did not release. It was according to the formula. The secretary then said 
why did you not consult me before releasing the fund? And to which Mohan replied, I did not feel the need because it was within my competence. That is some stubborn righteousness about Mohan. And similarly, on the political, politician bureaucrat relationship, he says, and I would like to quote, let me see the book. Yes. He says, while bureaucrats are busy scheming to get the political leaders under their control, the ministers would like to believe that they are wise to the tricks of the old foxes and would like to be one upon them. This Tom and Jerry game is quite common in many democratic systems. And on another, uh, he expresses his straightforward views about the civil service. He says, and I quote, no matter what the color of the party controlling the government, red, saffron, or tricolor, it is the strong and stable administrative structure of the country led by the All India Services, which has ensured that there were no hiccups in governance for the last seven decades. Truly, as Patel dreamt, it proved immune to the whims and fancies of the political systems that elected, that were elected by the people. So, the, I mean, he, he gives very straightforward views on many of the topics. And I agree with Mohan on so many things, even the aggregation of civil services role in nation building. But I think that the civil services have made mistakes. Like uh, we did not have a sense of urgency to make administrative processes more people friendly. Or uh, we were all loners and we did not see the merit of collective leadership. Or for that matter, we did not create a vision of our civil service. There's a vision for the army. There's a vision for so many other professions, but the civil services of India, they do not have a vision. So each one of us has her or his own vision. I think the present leadership of the civil service and Vasudha is there, they should give it a thought. Well, uh, I would not end without a word on what uh, Padmanabhaiya ji said about the ethics of governance. In one of his articles, Mohan talks about the need for training the members of parliament and legislatures on ethics of conducting themselves. I personally could not agree with him more. But I think that ethics is the heart of good governance and good politics too. And not only for the politicians, but also for the civil servants. If the civil servants observe ethical principles in the delivery of services, things will look very different. And ethics of public service, I believe, is bigger than personal integrity. It is doing more than what the law and the rules prescribed. It is going beyond one's normal duties in order to serve the people. It is being innovative in service delivery. So I have enjoyed the book. I have gone through the whole book and generally agree with Mohan's arguments on many topics. I hope that the book is read by the present day civil servants because it offers valuable material on diverse subjects. And they, they can keep it in mind while taking decisions. I'm going to place my two copies that Mohan very kindly sent to me in the library of the civil society organization with which I am currently associated. The core group of the organization meets every week to discuss a subject of public governance. I'm sure that the members of the core group will find the book very useful in their deliberations. And I'm sure that Mohan will continue to write for our pleasure and our 
edification. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, uh, for your words of wisdom and very perceptive remarks about the book. I'm sure uh, this will also be a, a material source material for the the civil servants preparing for the civil service exam, the uh, for the general studies and topics like this. The the range of topics covered would be an important study material for the on the general studies subject. So that I could recommend it to the students appearing the uh, the PSC exam. Uh, now, yes, sir. Absolutely correct. Thank you so much, sir, uh, for releasing the book and for your enlightening address, uh, which all of us uh, really look forward to. Now is the uh, time for to for the, uh, if I may say it again, the old metaphor of uh, the bridegroom to accept the uh, the honors of the book release. Uh, and uh, Ms. Dr. Mohan Kanda does not really need a need an introduction to this kind of a gathering where all of us. Uh, Either work with him on several years, and uh, but he, I would, it, I'd be failing in my duty if I don't quickly run through his uh, uh, the CV. No, is, no need actually, Vibhu, because very, very briefly, sir, very briefly, with your permission, uh, he belonged to 1968 batch of the Andhra Pradesh cadre. Uh, for for us uh, in the Andhra Pradesh of Telangana, he retired as the chief secretary uh, in 2005. In fact, I remember the, the distinct the day he retired. He was. Uh, with his trademark wit, he said that I am like a cowboy riding into sunset. But uh, we are happy to see the sunset has never come, sir. Uh, this, it's been a sunrise, series of sunrises. The number of uh, the books that you have, the prolific uh, uh, writer that you have been after your retirement uh, proves that there is no sunset in a career of a civil servant. We don't fade away uh, like this uh, soldiers uh, with apologies to General Rich. We continue to shine. Uh, and uh, Dr. Mohan Kanda, uh, not only served as the chief secretary, he, before that he was uh, secretary agriculture and cooperation in the government of India, I mean in state government and also secretary agriculture in the government of India. In fact, he presided over a very large empire of uh, departments which was called the food and agriculture when we were in the service uh, in the uh, 90s, 80s and 90s, which not only encompassed agriculture, horticulture, cooperation, also, the animal husbandry, fisheries, the entire whole gamut of uh, agriculture and allied uh, sectors, uh, he very ably uh, guided all those departments. I had the good fortune of working under him uh, directly uh, when uh, I was director of marketing and agriculture. He guided us to pre uh, prepare a scheme, which is now called the Raitu Bandhu scheme. It's called the cash credit scheme. In fact, he uh, has a, a PhD now from the University of Osmania University on the doctorate in the uh, cooperative agriculture credit that has been his topic for the phd he was awarded uh, after his retirement he served uh, in various uh, committees and the chairing committee on agriculture and allied sectors which was uh, for, the, uh, for the planning commission uh, for the formulation of the 12th uh, five year plan uh, he was a, he's a member of the governing body of uh, the centurion university of technology he is also a director on the ifco kisan scz which is coming up in nellore he is a trustee of the durga bai deshmukh uh, Mahila Sabha, Andhra Mahila Sabha Trust Board, and uh, uh, Asa Power Corporation, which is the chairman of that. In his career of four decades, uh, as I said, uh, he, uh, his uh, lasting contribution was in the field of agriculture and, of course, the disaster management. That is how the title of the book is derived. The harvest, uh, perhaps, is uh, with his love for the agriculture sector, is abiding. Uh, he, as the uh, uh, when he was chief secretary, the, 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 he had the. Uh, you will soon be guillotined. Okay, sir. Uh, it, you, it is your prerogative, sir. You were the speaker of the house. Uh, and, you yeah, can guillotine. Yeah. In any case, there's enough for the jacket of the book. Yeah, of the thank, thank you, sir. Uh, may I now request you to speak a few words about the book and uh, the. Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon to everyone, sir. Uh, my apologies first to those who have, might have watched the earlier uh, Telugu uh, book release function uh, because they may get a sense of deja vu because the two books are similar. And uh, everyone has experiences worth sharing. It's a question of finding the time and the inclination. And I'm afraid I had enough of both after my retirement. Uh, unlike animals, human beings find it very difficult to sustain uh, periods of boredom. Therefore, I had to stave away the danger of ennui after retirement, which is where, first of all, I must uh, express my gratitude 
to Padmanabh Hayagaru, who gave me an opportunity to mentor civil service aspirants in uh, an academy called the Chaitanya IAS Academy. That is when where my activities began, and I sort of actively engaged myself in uh, vigorous uh, <coughs> pursuits. And then Mark Twain once said that he had a vague memory of going to school, but he knew that it did not interfere with his education. And similarly, John Bentham, in his autobiography, the third chapter says, end of school, and the fourth chapter says, beginning of education. So what we understand and what is commonly perceived are different. And in my own case, I have learned that I have gained most of my wisdom and experience only after retirement, because earlier I was only busy uh, doing work. And there was no particular provocation for writing this book. Edmund Hillary, when somebody asked him, why did you climb the Everest? He said, it was because it is there. So similarly, I think I wrote the book because it was just begging to be written. It was just there. And then you know, I had to sort of get it out of my system. And it began with uh, somebody asking me, when Chandra Khan, a good friend, a star of Hans India, to write articles, it started there. And after that, I was more or less on uh, autopilot. It, it haven't stopped ever since. And um, as you all, all the seniors have pointed out, Vasudha so kindly and also Bibu, Prabhat Kumar Sahab, General Vidge, and uh, Padmanabhai Garu. Uh, lots of things have been covered, but one area which I love to write upon was the beautiful, mysterious, appealing uh, natural numbers, which are part of the structure of the universe. And also about uh, uh, the matters of contemporary interest. Of course, I tried very hard not to assume the role of a teacher, not preaching and uh, etc., but sharing my joy of knowing some things. One thing that has been mentioned is that I have never been able to resist the urge to laugh at myself. I find myself indescribably funny. And therefore, most of the wit in many of the pieces, uh, I am the butt uh, of that wit. And since I am saying a few words, which I was not originally keen on doing, but I thought I'd take this opportunity to share a few thoughts. I have always believed that to cause pain or suffering to others is the worst possible sin. And to bring a smile to a person's lips is the greatest virtue. So that belief also comes in some of the articles. And uh, as Sadi says in his Gulistan, which is the fountain of Persian wisdom, that he who hesitates to speak when it is necessary, and he who butts in when unnecessary is not a wise person. So I think by and large, I've managed to follow that principle throughout my service. And somehow I've never been able to understand how people can stay unmoved when surrounded by misery, deprivation, injustice, and intolerance, and double standards and hypocrisy. So what the Jews call chudspa, or in Hyderabad, we call it jaraf. I think the inability to withstand suffering being inflicted upon someone is a necessary part of a person's personality, especially if one is a public servant, civil or military. And uh, uh, I believe, by and large, uh, you know, Vajpayee Sahib's uh, uh, ex exhortation, I'll never forget, Uncha Mastak Ubhra Sina, Jina Hota Isa Jina. I think every civil servant and every military officer should uh, stay by that thing. And I've always been uh, trying very hard to tread the narrow and straight path, informed only by the counsel of my, that what the Bible says, the still small voice within you. And by and large, I think I managed to stave off the two important evils that always threaten a civil servant, fear and temptation. And the relief I got initially from the uh, response I got to the book really egged me on. And then, uh, of course, there are a few pats on the back, many, um, Raps on my knuckle saying, well, what the hell are you saying? And of course, to a large degree, studied indifference on the part of many from whom I expected response, but there was none. And it's a matter of regret for me that I never worked directly with Prabhat Kumar Sahib, because I had heard so much about him from a distance. But then there's plenty of compensation by way of the sparkling dinners we had in his house, basking in the warmth of the unforgettable hospitality of the to, to Kumars, and I'll never forget that. And afterwards, as he said, I had some opportunities like that, editing that book on disaster management. And here I'd like to share with you the fact that after 50, one believes that one has stopped learning. 
know, one's instincts, fears, hopes, delusions, frustrations, all of them have more or less crystallized by them. But I discovered to my own surprise, when I had crossed well past the age of 60, I started learning a lot, gained a lot of wisdom and experience from General Ridge in particular, in NDMA. Because especially about the world of military life, about which I had known very little earlier, that is okay. That's all right. He was a you know, celebrated uh, army chief and who constructed the wall of uh, defense uh, after the Kargil war. And naturally, he knew a lot about military life. But then I learned many things which I thought I knew about leadership, about teamwork. I remember once when we were making a presentation to Dr. Manmohan Singh, he, he, he asked me to lead a subject which was not my own in the NDMA. Then he said, Mohan, Leave it to me the, to be the judge of which weapon to use when. After that, I shut up and I did what he wanted. And at that age and in that situation, we slogged like school children, mind you, because he kept telling us the time has come. Because whenever we talked about our perks and uh, you know facilities, etc., because we had all been something in our lives and we wanted to be a little more comfortable and you know well appointed kind of surroundings. He would say, you people have been pampered enough by this country. Now the time is to pay back. And we literally slogged like school children, except that he was not a headmaster with a cane in his hand. But otherwise, I don't think I've worked that hard any time during my area. And at this time, I'd like to just share with you the fact that when I... Ah, yes. One thing I... One feeling, which I think has informed my actions and thoughts, throughout my career was Sahir Yudhanvi in his one couplet says, Ehle dil hai hum chashme karam se bhi beniyas. I don't think any temptation, anybody holding the key to give me you know, punishment or reward has really influenced me, which I remain grateful for. And when I was leaving uh, for joining uh, my first posting in the service, and I had been married by then, I asked my father what he would offer by way of advice. He simply said, Son, be happy. I thought it was a very straightforward kind of thing, but I'm still wondering exactly what he meant by that. But I know one thing. There may have been times when I was miserable, when I was disappointed, when I was frustrated, angry, whatever. But I do not recall one moment in my life when I was unhappy. Basically, deep within, I've always been a contented and happy person. And in fact, someone asked me in Krishi Bhavan one day, how can you keep smiling in a you know atmosphere like this where everyone is running around uh, hectically you know there is so much you know <clears throat> hustle and bustle here so i had to tell him my dear friend if i laugh out aloud it will be improper because the way the mandarins of the krishi bhavan took their job seriously amused me no end because the real work was going in the farmers field and it is not the uh, secretary of agriculture holding the annual conference which gives you your uh, hundreds of millions of tons of food grain and all that so, somehow, I think I've never been able to lose my cool and uh, my uh, sense of equanimity. And which is why, again, from Bhibhu, who began this, to Devi Prasad, to General Vij, Padmanabh Vekaru, to Prabhat Kumar Saab, and uh, Vasudha, all of these people, I have found that they have resolved to remain cheerful and happy. So, which is really a very wonderful common thing to share in this function today. And so many people had so much to do with this book that uh, I really don't know whom to thank. Whatever I could, I said in my acknowledgements. In fact, uh, you must have heard, Charlie Chaplin once entered into a competition which was organized to imitate Charlie Chaplin and he got the second prize. So if somebody asked me who had contributed most to this book, it would certainly not be me. I think it would be anybody else except me. And... Uh, my father was very keen on my joining the civil services. So after I finished my interview, he came and uh, debriefed me about what happened in the interview. It took exactly as, as long as the interview took. Then he finally said, how was I to know that there was so much you did not know? No, that is, that is where my education began because the limits of my ignorance were you know, actually exposed in that interview. And before I conclude my message to my good friend, publisher Anil Saab is, Bhai Anil Bhai, hum apni taraf se jo kuch kar sake kar liye, hmm? puri koshish kar liye, Prabhakumar Sahib, Jindal Vich Sahib, Padmanabhai Sahib, Vasudha Ji, 
अब सब अब देवी प्रसाद एंड विभु सबसे जबरदस्त सपोर्ट मिल गया अब देखेंगे क्या होता है कि क्या नहीं की दिस इज यू नो लेट अस सी व्हाट हैपेंस सो आई थिंक यू शुड रिमेन कॉन्फिडेंस एंड शेयरफुल एंड होप फॉर द बेस्ट थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच एंड बिफोर आई स्टॉप आई वांट टू टेल यू दैट आई वेंट टू माय ब्रदर acha okay um i went to my brother who obviously like my father knew my limitations and as i was leaving he came to the door to see me off and he said mohan come again sometime when you don't have so much time to spare because i think i overstayed my welcome so i don't think i want i'll speak any more the famous mathematician andrew wiles while after proving the celebrated 100 years that centuries uh, long uh, you know fermat's last theorem he proved it in cambridge and then when he came to the last line he said i think i'll stop here i think i'll stop there that's what i wanted to tell you and uh, many people have said many good things and uh, gopal gandhi my good colleague also and has sent a very nice message before i stop sir i just wanted to uh, share one thought with you which has always been uppermost in my mind on occasions such as this a good a, what i can call the bard of the telugu people when rajnikanth rao who was a playwright an actor a poet a singer everything he wrote a poem in which the one stanza goes omkara parivuttam vishvam sankalpa parimitam drushyam i don't think i have to translate it to your audience like this it means that you know the universe is surrounded by the sound of omkara or energy which is what they discovered the astrophysicists in switzerland god's particle and uh, your uh, higgs boson and all that gravitational waves etc so what it means is that when you shut your eyes and ask yourself what you can do everything depends upon the bigness of the picture that you can see so the effort should continue thank you very much sir for your indulgence thank you very much for uh, responding to my invitations and thank you very much for participating so enthusiastically thank you thank you sir uh, we did hope that you never stop keep writing this is perhaps uh, we hope that meant, i thought you meant speaking <laughs> no no sir uh, we would never stop uh, writing uh, this is uh, by now the 20th or the 25th book you completed we hope a century from you uh, you we are expecting a century uh, the last item today is uh, the, a vote of thanks by the publisher uh, who uh, represents the Uh, the bs publication the, uh, the book syndicate publications which is 60 year old institution in hyderabad one of the well known publishers and uh, mr anil shah uh, who heads this uh, organization he has been instrumental in organizing the hyderabad book fair and several such initiatives in hyderabad uh, he is being the publisher uh, for this book and many other publications of uh, dr kanda and now i request him to uh, give the vote of thanks <coughs> thank you very much sir honorable sri prabhat kumar ji respected and distinguished guest our most valued invited guest ladies and gentlemen i deem it a great honor and privilege to propose vote of thanks on this occasion bsp books private limited are grateful to you for making time for the book for this book release despite your busy schedules and making the event interesting we are humbled by mr prabhat kumar ji sharing the perspective as a chief guest we thank shrimati vasudha mishra for has given a brief introduction of the book random harvest we are, we also thank general week shop and sri padmanaya garu for sharing their views our heartfelt thanks to mr bp acharya for moderating the function and devi prasad for welcoming the address we would like to take this opportunity to inform you all with this today's book we have published four books of dr mohan kanda and we look forward to dr mohan kanda to author more and more books with him with his rich and vast experience which we have publication books will probably will happy to publish dr mohan kanda's books which we have published till date are ethics in governance disaster management agriculture in india contemporary challenges all the books are available on amazon finally we are happy to inform you that we have made arrangement with global partner for selling and distributing our books print as well as online throughout the world i once again thank all for being with us it is a great pleasure thank you thank you very much sir thank you very much sir thank you very much sir namaskar thank you very much
ఫణి కుమార్ గారు లేరు సార్ యు ఆర్ మ్యూటెడ్ మోహన్ మీరు మీరు ఐ జస్ట్ వాంటెడ్ థాంక్ యూ సార్ మిస్టర్ ప్రభాత్ కుమార్ ఐ వాంటెడ్ టు థాంక్ మిస్ జనరల్ బ్రిజ్ ఐ వాంటెడ్ టు థాంక్ మిస్టర్ పద్మనాభయ్య అండ్ వసుధ అండ్ విభు అండ్ జయ ప్రసాద్ అండ్ ఆఫ్ కోర్స్ నో ప్రాబ్లం ఐ థింక్ देयर ఆర్ సమ్ పీపుల్ వి ఆర్ నాట్ ఏబుల్ టు సీ లైక్ డాక్టర్ ఫణి కుమార్ అండ్ అదర్స్ సార్ ఐ యామ్ షూర్ యా 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 ఐ థాంక్ ఎవరీవన్ హు హస్ జాయిన్ థాంక్ యూ వెరీ మచ్ థాంక్ యూ వెరీ మచ్ థాంక్ యూ సార్ థాంక్ యూ వెరీ మచ్ థాంక్ యూ థాంక్ యూ సార్ థాంక్స్ అ లాట్ ఫర్ కమింగ్ సార్ థాంక్ యూ వెరీ మచ్